So to define a scalar, which we're going to go through scalars first. That is a very simple command. And now you'll see two things. One, I get a confirmation down here that, that did not have any errors. And in this environment section, I actually see the name of uh, my variable and what I have stored there. This is a string because it is multiple parts or multiple characters, and it is surrounded by quotation marks. And we'll talk about the structure of this just in a second. So wait, you just said the string consists of what's in the quotation marks. Mm -hmm. okay. The string is everything in that quotation mark. Okay. Booleans, which are true or false, are always capitalized. This is my goal for Boolean. Floats always have a decimal. Integers don't have a decimal, but are numeric. And you can rename things as many times as you want. And you can also name them whatever you'd like. I'm sorry, so what are you naming? What are these? So this, in this case, uh, this is all the different types of scalar that we discussed. And I'm setting them by defining them with this equals. And I'm giving them the second value afterwards. So there's a little bit to break down here, the grammar of this. And going through this will make a lot more sense later through. Can you give you which bit I So these are strings, booleans, floats, integers, strings, and uh, more strings. And these are again all in the notes. So if you're if you're um, getting behind because you're writing things down, I did write in my typical verbose manner everything in the notes. <laughs> okay. Uh, so a couple of things here. One, you may see something in your life of using R that looks like this. That arrow is 100% the exact same thing as an equal sign. There's a weird cultish decision between which one you use. I don't care. Use whatever makes you happy. The arrow makes more sense because you see that it is jamming whatever information you have into that variable name. Go for it. I tend to use equal and uh, tend to promote the use of equal for one very useful reason. We as biologists have to switch languages a lot. Uh, there's a, a high likelihood that you're going to be using R as well as something like Bash. If you're going to be using R in maybe Perl or Python, the equal is more universal. So if you're going to learn a language, you might as well use something that allows you to swap more cleanly between languages and allows you to not go insane trying to remember the intricacies of two languages when you can just say everything's equal. Now, a little caveat about that equal. If anybody has had Unix stress because of white space issues or trying to define a variable in bash, what am I using here? Six. That will work. Ooh, so there's no quote. It's always fun when you're switching between. This works, but this does not. White space is how Unix splits things. If there is a space between it, it's a different chunk of information. That is 100% not the case in R. So, R instead uses punctuation. A lot of people have white space issues in Bash. You are going to have punctuation issues at some point in time in R. Um, so you can say, eh, uh, one. You can do the same thing with spaces. This will change the string a little bit, but it's still valid. It does not matter. What matters is you have that equal and you have those locations. Because everything in R is going to be based on punctuation. And I'm going to point out all the different various, various types of punctuation we're going to use, but this is the first one. Knowing that punctuation is important, 
uh, and that it, uh, spacing is not going to be as important. While we're on the case of punctuation, that semicolon, 100% not needed. I do promote the use of semicolon for one reason, well, two reasons. One, again, it is more transferable across languages. It's not going to hurt anything by having that uh, semicolon there. I have started to do a lot of Perl. Perl requires a semicolon. It makes it easier for me to switch, just like using that equal. Um, if it's knowing to, just don't do it. The other reason I have it is because it makes reading the textbook a heck of a lot easier to know when a command ends. Because if there's multiple lines and you don't see a semicolon, it's all the same command, and I just couldn't fit it on one page width. Or if there's multiple commands and they both end in a semicolon, it just means there's two commands in a row. It just makes it a little bit more readable. Now you'll notice on the topic of punctuation, punctuation we used for all of this is a little bit different. This is how R knows what kind of data you're doing. Quotation marks mean it expects a string. All capitals and words were false means it's Boolean. If it sees a decimal, it's going to make it a float, which is also sometimes called a double because of the double precision. Uh, if it doesn't see a decimal and it's numeric, it's going to assume it's an integer. This allows you to not have to explicitly mention what kind of scalar it is in R, which you have to do in some other languages, but it can get a little bit tricky. So given that knowledge, what happens if I were to say, what does R think Nate is going to be? There's no quotes. There's no decimals. That's a function. Not a function. It is a variable name. If, it's, if you give R a string without quotations, it assumes it's a variable name. And that has to be defined ahead of time. So if you look here, I defined name and I use quotation marks. R knows name is a string. Great. I can then use this to name it as a new thing. I can add things and include that. But it's going to assume anything that doesn't have quotes around it is a variable name. So if you're trying to define a string and it says, I can't find a variable, it's because you're not putting those quotations around it. Those punctuation marks are incredibly important. 